I am Ken Yasuda. You're watching The Red Bull Show. Hi, welcome to the Red Booth Show. I'm Kimberly. On tonight's episode, I have Mr. Japan, Ken Yasuda. Not only is he an award winning bodybuilder, but he's also an MMA champion coach. So come and get to know him. So, hi, Ken. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you for coming on the show. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> This is pretty exciting. I can't believe it.、Yeah. It's Mr. Japan, guys. <laughs> So,、uh, you obviously are a champion bodybuilder, but you do a、yeah. lot more than just that, too. Yeah, I took、uh, Mr. Japan in 1999. That's awesome. Sounds kind of old now, but you know. <laughs> It's still amazing how many、still、people get to say that they were Mr.、Yeah. Japan. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I continue to compete after that, you know,、yeah. uh, as a professional bodybuilder. And、uh, the amazing part was,、um, you know, I used to, I grew up. Watching、uh, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all the muscle, you know, tough guys. Yeah. And,、um, you know, one time, you know,、uh, I stood on the same stage as Arnold. Really? Was on stage. That was Mr. World, you know. Wow. I was、uh, honored to just to stand there, you know. <laughs> But、uh, just, you know, yeah, it was an amazing feeling, you know. And I continued to do pro bodybuilding. And、uh, I did pretty much everything I wanted to do.、Um, and so it was time to move on. And、uh, you know, UFC.、Uh, That's people, where you gravitated towards. Yeah, my first,、uh, I, it's not a sport, but、uh, you know, thing was martial arts. You know, I was、right. six years old, started karate. Nice. And so, you know, I always had a passion and continued. And as I was a professional bodybuilder, I also coached a lot of、uh, fighters. Such as、uh, some of the legends, you know, like you met Don Fry. <laughs> you know? That's right. Yeah, that's and right. And a lot of fighters. And he was one、too. of the original guys on UFC、oh, yeah. that was like, no holds bars. Exactly.、Uh, they can rip off your head, basically, and、yeah. not get in trouble. <laughs> no rules. Not, well, <laughs> <laughs> well in, in a sense, yeah. <laughs> But、uh, yeah, so I was,、uh, you know, also coaching. You know, I didn't, well, at that time, there was no way to make a. Career from fighting, you know, like your MMA. So, you know, I continue to do bodybuilding, but I always had a passion in, you know, martial arts fighting. So, what other、I、martial、coached. arts did you,、um, did you train as? I did judo, you know, and so judo is basically you grab your opponent, take、okay. the opponent down, and also fight on the ground.、Right? Okay. So, karate is punches and kicks, you know, so stand up fighting. Right. So, and jujitsu is on the ground, right? Jujitsu is on the ground, yeah. Okay. And jujitsu and judo are kind of similar, but you know, jujitsu have more submissions. Judo chop. Yeah. Isn't that a thing, right? Like where you have to like, break, break like, boards and things like that? That's a karate, right? Oh, okay, karate chop. Karate. Yeah. Yeah, chops are illegal in judo. <laughs> really?、Yeah. Okay. You can choke the guy, but you can't kick or punch in judo. But MMA is basically the ultimate you know, fighting style. Yeah. yeah. Anything is allowed. So that was exciting when it got really popular, big, you know. So I started to coach more of the guys, and、uh, there was a huge organization. It was just as big as、uh, UFC called International Fight League,、mm. and known as IFL. So that was a team concept. Each, fight, each team had five fighters from lightweight to heavyweight, and then、uh, all the teams fought, you know, like a football and baseball,、wow. you know, team against team. So I was offered internationally to, or? Yeah, internationally. So I was offered a team called、uh, Tokyo Sabres. So I ran the team as a head coach, got the fighters get ready for, to fight another team. That's really cool. Yeah. We have to take a break, but we'll be right、okay. back with Mr. Japan. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time. On budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha.
So in a International Fight League, I was offered to run a, a team called the Tokyo Sabres. And, uh, you know, basically I had the five guys get ready to fight another team. So and, this was uh, like the beginning of UFC sort of before uh, it became mainstream? Uh, yeah, UFC was already getting bigger. Mm. But the IFL came out, probably IFL was bigger because it was on national TV. You know, the, so and the prime time, Monday night and Saturday night, you know. So UFC didn't like it. International <laughs> Fight League. That's yeah. that was and it was that it was over in name. Japan? That was here in oh, the okay. States. Yeah, Fox. Cool. My net uh, my uh, network T V nationwide. It Amazing. Was, yeah, team concept. So we got a lot of local fans like football and baseball. Okay. And I think concept was like great. Like from different areas, like from Texas yeah. or whatever. Tucson like Scorpions and Nevada Lions and New York Pitbulls, you know, like that. Okay. And mine was Tokyo Sabres. And uh, we trained here in LA, but, you know, <laughs> and let's was call that way. <laughs> from Japan that was in your team? No, that was the thing. I was the, I was from Japan, right? Yeah. But uh, one guy was, uh, one fighter was from Japan. Others were like uh, from Russia to South Central, right here. And really? <laughs> yeah. That's so It funny. was like an international team, you yeah. know. So, <laughs> but uh, you know, we were we were undefeated in the season, so we did pretty good. And um, yeah, I was it was challenging, but I was happy, you know, because fighters are basically not like a team athletes, right? Individual athletes putting them together was very difficult, you know. If I say, look at this way, you know, not everybody look at this way, right? <laughs> it's like that. It's very tough, you know? So I had to and watch you probably, everybody. You probably had to deal with, like, um, just the whole interpersonal yeah. relationships. And, like, those are some macho yeah. <laughs> macho dudes you're dealing with, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you'd be surprised. Everybody, no matter how good the fighter is, everybody has fear. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, scared to get beaten or hurt. Or uh, if you lose a lot, you'll be out of business, you know? You have to keep winning. So uh, everybody has a few different It's like a high-stress type of a situation, oh, yeah, yeah, continuously. Yeah. yeah. How do people it's, deal with that? Some guys can eat for two to three days. They don't show it, but uh, some guys can't. Or other they guys... They can't eat. Right. Okay. So nervous. He couldn't eat for two to three days before a fight. That's not good, you know. But No, because uh, then you don't have the energy and he must have right. been like totally exhausted, <laughs> yeah. right? So I had to make him eat. <laughs> Still. You're like, eat! No, I'm just kidding. And another guy was just throwing up, you know, throwing up just... Uh, From anxiety or... Yeah, in the wow. locker room, just throwing up more and more and more. And as soon as he came out to the, you know, basically to the cage or ring, you know, into yeah. the audience, then he stopped throwing up. And he got in the you know, ring and he fought, went back to the locker room. Okay, started to throw up again. So <laughs> wow. It was like that. But if you look at him, you never, you never guess, you know. It looks like he has, he's not sensitive at all, but a crazy, crazy sensitive guy. Just like that, throwing up. <laughs> well, that's probably what yeah, I would be so. doing <laughs> if I was going to have to fight. Yeah. Wow, that's so, really intense. Yeah, I had to be there, you know, just to encourage them, yeah. make them feel confident, you know, that uh, it's and not And didn't, didn't you job. work with, um, you worked with China, right? Yeah, China was a former WWE, WWF star, you right. know, yeah. and the first woman to wrestle men, so that was amazing, you know. <laughs> And, That's uh, a big deal. Yeah, I think uh, you know you've heard of Ronda Rousey. Of course. You know? But China at that time was probably bigger, you know, because yeah. she just she was bigger than just being a female wrestler, you know. And uh, her, I think the book was second second bestseller. And uh, but uh, you know uh, she was. No, she sort wrestler. of started it. Like she sort of started that whole like female mm -hmm. fighter yeah. image. Which I think she was one of the first. Most yeah. popular ones to come out. Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, of course, her work ethic was amazing, you know. And uh, she wanted to get everything done 100%, you know. So until she got it done, she wouldn't stop. That was like that. And after WWE, uh, she came to New Japan Pro Wrestling Federation, and where I was also coaching a lot of the top wrestlers. And, uh, you know, so Mr. Inoki, who was the owner of the New Japan Pro Wrestling Federation at that time, took uh, her to Japan and in front of 100,000 people, she was introduced and she made her, you know, big debut in Japan too. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. 
but uh, I knew her very, you know, personally, very close, and uh, yeah, amazing person, you know. Not not that that she's big and strong, but uh, work ethic and uh, very caring, you know, nice person. So it's not, uh, you know, there's some uh, negative image of her, but not all of them are true. So, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I think everybody has someone out there saying something like yeah. that you wouldn't like. <laughs> but, you know, for the most part, she was, she had a great name and reputation and she yeah. did something really impressive. Exactly. And, um, you know, it was really sad when, um, I mean, she was so sudden, the, right. the, her passing. Right. Um, and I think that that had to do with uh, medication or something that she yeah. was taking. Yeah, she had a trauma, you know, so she was taking medication for that. But that medication is dangerous, you know. You take it, if you don't keep a record, uh, you forget. And you say, oh, I haven't taken the medicine yet, so you take it again. So you just keep doing that, and you can overdose and die. Wow. And uh, a lot of people have died that, from that, you know. So uh, that's what because it makes you so like foggy that you just don't even remember right. if you've taken it. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So she wasn't like a drug addict, or alcoholic, not none of them like that. You know. Yeah. Because I knew her pretty much every day. <laughs> I was getting texts and what she was doing. She was telling me, and the video, you know, video clips and pictures. No, she quit all of those and she changed her life. Everything was so good, and then just uh, medicine killed her. You know. So. It's horrible. Everybody should be careful, <laughs> you know. Yeah, people yeah. really do need to be careful. Yeah, there's yeah, too yeah. many people that get uh, that we lose right. from from medicine on it, from like yeah. using medicine, uh, bad mixtures. Yeah, all yeah, sorts yeah. of stuff like that. It's actually, reaction, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I think it's really wonderful that you knew her so well and that you, you yeah. know, helped her and and yeah. And was, uh, are you training other people now? Yeah, there's, you know, here, and you know, some people come in and for to get ready for whatever. There's a little, you know, boy, 15 years old. He made a national team in baseball. Oh, cool. So, and he's a good candidate to get uh, drafted from, uh, you know, Major League Baseball team. You're so, helping him with baseball, too? Yeah. Originally, I came to this country How to be a... How many things do you do? <laughs> you do, like, everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Well, actually, baseball is really big in Japan. Yeah, huge. Huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think it's even bigger in Japan than it is here? Than here, yeah. Way it bigger, is? yeah. Really? Like the guy uh, Ichiro Suzuki. Oh, I've uh, even heard of him, for you know, sure, yeah. He has two, three major league records now, you know. Before he came here, I trained him, you oh. know, because uh, I came here to be a major league baseball player originally. You did? <laughs> oh, my God. That's totally and, different uh, from bodybuilding. Yeah, I wanted to be the first Japanese guy to make it, you know. Yeah. And I just, you know, tore the ligament here, elbow. That was it. But, you know, I trained each row that uh, asked him to achieve my goal, you know, as yeah. a hitter and in the major league baseball. Okay, wow. we, I think that's amazing because yeah. everyone knows who he is. Yeah, okay, but we have to take a break. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be right back yes. with Mr. Japan. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mm, Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We are here with Mr. Japan, Kenya Suda. 
How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> yes, and you've been coaching so many different people yeah. in different areas of sports, not right. just bodybuilding, not just um, MMA, MMA, but also in baseball. And you were just right. talking about one of your baseball players. Ichiro Suzuki, right? Ichiro Suzuki, yeah. isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. He did an awesome job, you know. <laughs> Definitely. But he was worried that if he could make it here, you yeah. know, because there are more games, 160 yeah. games a year. Yeah. In Japan, there are only 130 games. And the players are better, you know, so he was... The players are better worried. in Japan? A better players are better here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Japan, uh, <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, funny. I can't be biased. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's funny. Yeah. But uh, Ichiro did really well. No, I'm very proud of him. And uh, You should be. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so how did you first start, like, bodybuilding? Like, what did you start doing to get into that? Well, it's, uh, I played baseball. Okay. You know, even in college. And that's where I got, my elbow got hurt, you uh -huh. know. So, um. But my, the team trainer didn't know anything about uh, conditioning or what to eat when my energy level was low, you know. So I was always curious, you know, mm -hmm. what kind of food do I have to eat to bring up the energy so I can have the best performance in baseball. And uh, so when I couldn't play baseball anymore, I did uh, decided, you know, uh, I want to do something that... Uh, in sports, become a pro athlete. That was another goal I had since I was little. And I came here, uh, my parents are very supportive, you know, let me do what I wanted to do. And I look at it, baseball, you know, I didn't make it. So the truth is I failed, you know, whatever reason that was. And I couldn't go back to, you know, let my parents down. And I had to prove that I can be somebody, I can do something. So I chose bodybuilding. And that was actually a Everything test. happens for a reason, though, yeah. you see? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I had to make it no matter what, you know. So I became more serious, I guess. And I could not fail. So I tried to study, you know, nutrition, physiology, everything to really understand body. Right. But then again, there's a... What's up? I was just going to say that's <laughs> something interesting that I've recently yeah. been learning more about personally. Right. And I've been on a diet for the last two months. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, wow, this is so cool because I've just started to yeah. have this journey of realizing how much the food you eat affects right. you. Like, yeah. it's a huge, huge part of it, right? Yeah. That's probably, I would say, 70%. Right. You know? And then 30% probably work out, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, if you control what you eat, your body responds. But, <laughs> yeah. And you probably have to <clears throat> eat just, like, tons of food to stay, like, really buff, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how much I eat food, a lot. <laughs> how much food do you eat in one day? It's, I, right now, I'm, you know, not that big compared to before, so about six. <laughs> <laughs> He's like really huge, but it's true. The pictures I've seen are from when you were like yeah. Mr. Japan. I was, yeah, I had to be big and ripped. Yeah, like giant. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now I probably six, five, six thousand kilocalories per day just to maintain. Of what kind of food? Uh, clean food. So I, I like to eat fish <clears throat> because fish keeps your, my stomach flat, you know, more than chicken and beef. But chicken and beef Really? Stay. I'm going to have to start eating some fish. <laughs> <laughs> Good for your skin too, you know. But, oh, yeah. Uh, and then a little bit of carbs. You know, I need the energy yeah. to move, right? And then vegetables for new, new uh, vitamins and minerals, right? Yeah. So I have a balanced meal. Plus, you know, I have to have junk food, <laughs> right? So it's a mentally little bit. healthy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you well, know, your I muscles enjoy. burn off the junk food in like two seconds, probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably <yeah. laughs> I look better after junk food. So, yeah. But, so, uh, yeah. so then you started to follow all of that nutrition and you started to compete. Yeah, but that's not enough, you know. If then a nutritionist or somebody who studies nutrition, exercise physiology will be a champion, no. There's a saying called, uh, you know, if you want to be a champion, learn from a champion, right? So I went to a world champion, professional, and I call him my master. You know, he happened to be from Japan, but living here in Venice. So I went to him and uh, asked him to teach me everything. Who is that? Uh, Katsumi Ishimura. He's about 40 years older than me that time, you know. Oh, wow. But uh, he was amazing, you know. He was on a natural food uh, diet 
So not only getting in shape, but in a healthy way. You can do it in an unhealthy way if you control the calories. But, Just uh, calories and that's not the right way to do it. Right, so in a healthy way and with natural food and then, you know, he's, he's done it all. So I want to learn from him. I blocked out everybody else, what everybody else said in the gym. You hear all kinds of stories, you know, everybody talks as if they know. Yeah. They don't. 99% don't know that. But uh, this guy I want to learn from, from scratch, and they learned it. So my first competition, bodybuilding, uh, it was, I took Mr. Japan, right? Yeah. Quick. That's amazing. And then he became professional right away. So yeah. that's a shortcut. And so, did you notice that a lot of people uh, tend to just default to try to cheat the system, like try to do like steroids and like right. stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah, that's a big issue. But then again, bodybuilding, after you become professional, there's a league, those things are allowed. And there's another league, it's a natural show. Really? So I've only competed in natural shows. Interesting. And the other, the other league, you know, they allow they do anything. Allow it. So okay. they become freaky. <laughs> <laughs> A well, freak show, but it's okay, you know. <laughs> Everybody does it in that league. Right. But the downside is we have to actually take another unhealthy. break. <laughs> yeah. But please okay. keep let's keep that uh, in mind, and we'll continue this <laughs> okay. conversation in just a second. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top-rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We're here with Mr. Japan. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's getting teaching me yeah, about being here. buff. <laughs> <laughs> and so you were talking yeah. about how there's different leagues. There's the natural league, right. and then there's the freaky, right, crazy like steroid league. I guess. Yeah, what do they call yeah, that one? Whatever is allowed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like uh, like a circus, right? If you mm -hmm. go to go to a circus, you want to see the craziest things, you know. Yeah. But not everybody likes it. No. So you know, I call that freaky. League, you know, <laughs> freak <show>. you know? <laughs> but it's okay if they love it that way you know but the downside is that they use a lot of steroids so they are harming their health so sooner yeah, or later yeah because they're not going to last so long with no. that no they've got a head they will get the health problem right heart attack cholesterol problem uh, cancer and there's a league the other, another league it's a natural show and we have like a four to five times a year doping test so, you know, you have to, you can't touch any of those. So it test you, right? Yeah. And uh, Mr. Japan was also uh, used the, uh, like, uh, what's called a prohibited, uh, prohibited substance list of uh, Olympic Committee. Oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah. So we, I couldn't even drink caffeine, you know? <laughs> you couldn't drink caffeine? <laughs> yeah. That's horrible. That was, yeah. And why? Because that enhances the performance in oh, Olympics. Okay, because you know? that's, what, that's what's in pre-workout. That's that stuff people take, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. packed full of right. caffeine and like taurine <laughs> or something. And exactly. then people are like, they go <laughs> yeah. run to the gym. and yeah. yeah. So I was extra careful, you know. I didn't drink coffee or tea, you know. So that's I, so that was a sad. tough time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, all not, worth it. It was all yeah. worth it. But natural show in a pro league, you know, it was over the counter stuff was okay. Yeah. So it was a little easier, you know. Yeah. So I didn't have to worry about coffee or anything. Well, pre workout stuff was okay. Yeah. But the prescribed medicine, which is steroids, uh, not okay, you know. Yeah. 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 So That's physiques cool. are different. Natural show and a freak show, you know. So, oh, I'm sure. So I don't look that freaky. <laughs> 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 But I'm a bodybuilder. Yes, <laughs> so, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I thought you looked amazing. I've seen all the photos of, from your like, you know, champion years and all that. And, yeah. I mean, you're still mm, like you. super buff compared to it's, everybody. Uh, try try to stay. <laughs> try to stay in shape. <laughs> How <laughs> often do you have to work out like right now just to maintain? Oh, every day. Yeah. Every day, yeah. One hour weight training and about 30 minutes of cardio. And I do three days a week, uh, three days a week of uh, striking, you know. So because when I coach, I have to be able to do what I say, you know. Oh, yeah. It's like smoking, right? You're smoking. You can't do it. People don't smoke. You can't do that. Right? So it doesn't work. That's so true. So, yeah. So <laughs> I got to stay in shape. <laughs> yeah. Then they want to come and train with you. That's right. <laughs> and is that what you mostly do right now is do coaching for... Like yeah, I do a lot for, yeah. for seminars, uh -huh. you know. I go to seminars about uh, MMA training to fitness training and uh, some appearances and, you know, some TV TV show like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah and uh, some movies, you know. So, But preferably I want to do more of that because I enjoy, you know, different from before. I coached and uh, so many people so many years so, but I need more, uh, like, a stimulation, you know. <laughs> well, if you could do some more movies, so, then. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> That's what I'm kind of a little aiming at, you know. Because you don't see, like, a buff Asian actor. That's as true. Of today, right? That's true. Usually very skinny, nerdy, wimpy guy. That's Aww. an Asian actor. You know? <laughs> Stereotype. Okay, that's not always true. So I want to kind of, you know, prove something, you know. Show something <laughs> different. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. Well, there's Jackie Chan, who's funny. Yeah. And then there's another guy that's pretty famous that's all about just kicking ass. Oh. What's his name? Who's yeah. that, Jet Li? Yes, Jet yeah. Li. <laughs> yeah. Jet Li. Fast, good, he's, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. not funny. He doesn't... Right, right. He's, like, <laughs> he's, he's super like, serious. He's funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So you I, can be the, like, friendly... Uh, buff guy. Buff guy. Yeah, yeah. I the can still MMA move. fighter. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah, uh, you have my okay, best shot. So, so all the casting directors out there, there you go. There's your character yeah. sheet yeah. for him. Give me a job. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, so. Ken, it's been wonderful having <laughs> you on the show. You. Yeah, thanks for sharing your stories. And, yeah, you know, you. people should go and find you on kenyasuda.com. Yeah. And check out all of the many see. things that you've been doing. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see crazy pictures or some fun stuff, you know, visit my website. Kenyasuda.com. That's right. Mr. And, Japan. Uh, <laughs> I have no muscles. I have no muscles. Yeah. I'm working on it. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to ever train, you know, you ever want to train, you can come down. All right. I'm going to get trained by Mr. Japan, guys. Soon I'm going to be like a giant. <laughs> <laughs> Next China. That's right. <laughs> no. Thank you so much for watching Mr. Japan, Kenyasuda on... The Red Booth.